There we go. There we go. We're on. I did ask Bart if he wanted to come over, but he had uh, family uh, time planned tonight. So hey, Bart never likes to do live streams. It's all good. <laughs> He's got Bart has younger kids. He does, and they do a lot of stuff together. So no, that's good, man. You got to spend the time with the kiddo. That's for sure. Yep. Let me adjust this here. Hey, everybody. We'll wait just a couple seconds for people to get on, and then we'll get going here. I see Jason Fisk and Go Habs are already tuning in. What's up, guys? All right. We got a few people popped in here. Like, we're already we'll pop up to six viewers. Hey, everybody. Good evening. How's everybody's Friday night? Uh, thank you for joining us. If you had, didn't already notice, I've got a special guest tonight. I'm really happy to finally get him on the channel. Uh, Scott from the Scotch Test Dummies has been uh, very helpful to me and through my journey in this whiskey tube world. Um, he was one of the handful of people that I reached out to when I started doing this whole thing and just kind of asked him for if he had any pointers or advice. And he was he's always from the get go has been super helpful. Answered any questions I have streamed with me one on one to kind of help me figure a couple of things out with actually doing my first live stream you helped me with. And so Scott's always been a great help. So it's it's a very uh, big honor for me to have him here on the channel. So, hey, Scott, say say hello. Hello, everyone. And thanks, John, for having me. Uh, glad to do it. Whenever I got time, I'd love to come on and drink whiskey and just talk. Talk whiskey. Talking and whiskey is kind of why we got into this, I guess, huh? That's right. That's right. <laughs> so uh, as I've done once before with Scott from My Bourbon Journey, me and Scott a few weeks back swapped some samples so we could do a fun little informal blind tasting with you guys while we're talking and drinking tonight. So I'm glad to have you all here. And uh, I guess let, let's get into some whiskey, huh? Okay. Well, we got, so we got blind samples. I sent you um, four. Did I mark them A, B, C, D or one, two, three, four? A, B, C, D. That's right. Um, so let's just pour. I'm going to pour. I've got your A sample here. I'm going to pour it. Now, what um, what I'll do is I'm going to turn off my chat so I won't be looking. But if you want, type in there to everybody what I'm drinking. We'll just do this we'll, and we'll just go back and forth. If you, you want to do it that way, I'll go first and then you go with yours. Yeah, that works. All right, let me uh, minimize, or I'm going to uh, enlarge the screen here over my chat box so I can't see what you type and tell everybody. All right, everybody. You ready, Scott? I'll type it in now. Yep, go. I can't see. All right, so I'm going to let you guys know what Scott's drinking at the moment so you know and he doesn't. Actually, let me look it up just to confirm because I don't want to give you the wrong <laughs> one. Smells like a bourbon. I can tell you that much right off the bat. Really rich bourbon. Woo. Night. It's got a great, great nose. Very full. Rich, sweet cinnamons, caramels. Good color to it. I don't, uh, I don't know if you can see it or not. Everybody right. out there can see. Nice oak. I'll just go in on the palate. First sip. Mmm. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Cream corn, butterscotch, caramels. Not real high ABV, 46, 48% maybe. Great mouthfeel on it. Yeah, on that one, I too, I also got big, big butterscotch. That's like the predominant mm -hmm. note when I first mm -hmm. tasted that one. And Donner Pass just said he noticed the ECBP on the floor behind you, and he's impressed with your uh, collection back there. <laughs> I just found uh, the newest batch today, batch C C nine eighteen. Well, I've got uh, well, I'm, I blocked most of it. I had uh, a while back. I'd done the shelves over here, and I'd filled them up quicker than I thought I would. So I'd had to expand, and I had three uh, floating shelves behind me here that I was always afraid to stack too many bottles on. So I just redid them the same as I did over there, but. 
I went, uh, I've got a couple of 12 inch shelves and a couple of 18 inch shelves just to vary it up a little bit, but I was able to squeeze in five shelves now where I got four in over there, just using all 18 inch between 18 inches between the shelves. But yeah. Yeah. It looks great, man. I remember when you built those shelves and you did that video and it was very cool. Yeah. A great look. A lot better than what I'm doing. If, I don't want to show you what my whiskey's uh, stored in currently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. Good. Uh, good. I, I don't. Um, not real. Um, it's not old. 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 Um, I would say ten to twelve years old, somewhere in that range, maybe. Very. It's got a very nice mouthfeel. Very good. All right. Let me know when you're ready for the reveal. Or if you need to sit on it a little while, you just you just say the word. I don't know anything you want to ask me about it. Oh, now you're getting into. Now you're putting me on the spot. Um, uh, I don't know, kind of, kind of of reveal it. Reveal it a little bit at a time. Maybe the price of it, the age of it, the ABV. The okay, that's a great it, idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. So why don't we go with the price? What do you think is a a, a reasonable pricing on a whiskey that you're such as when you are drinking right now uh, that's hard to tell i would say and especially with if you're talking retail or secondary i just bought some whiskey today and secondary is just driving up our free market prices in kansas oh uh, let's not it, talk about secondary then we, we don't want to get oh, i know it <laughs> i would say i would say this is hopefully at the most a 80 to 100 dollar bottle um hopefully cheaper than that Okay, I think you mentioned you thought it was what 46, 48 percent ADBV. You stick in there, yeah. yeah, 45, 46. Okay, and I think you said 10 to 12 years. So, I think, and I think I believe you said you, you were thinking bourbon at the beginning. So, all right, I yeah. think we covered most of our bases here. <laughs> so, if you're ready, we'll do this reveal here. You are currently drinking. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. American, okay. American whiskey, yeah. which I didn't know how I was going to feel about when I first drank this whiskey. And I was super impressed by it because I liked the Michter's bourbon, but it wasn't amazing. It didn't blow my hair back. But I thought the American whiskey is much best, much better, much more complex, lots more character, bold flavors, even though it's still not a lot higher proof. I mean, this I think it's the same, if not uh, a little bit lower than the bourbon, but it's it's 83.4 proof. So, um, I mean, it's definitely not a high proof and you get a ton of flavor out of it for being such a low proof. So I found it really impressive and right. in terms of pricing. I think I picked this up for, I got it really cheap. I think I got it for 35 bucks. Yeah. I was going to say it's general, like a 35 to $40 bottle. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I've seen it go up to maybe 45, but yeah, it's in that 35 to 45 range. So it's really a good value. I think too, in terms of what you're getting out of the value, um, age wise, there's not, there's obviously it's not an age dated whiskey, but I, I mean, it tastes older than I even said this when I reviewed it is I thought it was older like you kind of did because I think that second barreling or the barreling they're using with the used barrels kind of gives off some of that. I think that takes on some of that older whiskey character. So it kind of throws you off when you try to guess the age on it. Well, and but, I think that's really um, the reason it's not a bourbon is that they've used some refill barrels. Yeah, it. it's there. I think they're re, or they were originally a bourbon cast and they refilled them with this whiskey. So I would imagine this whiskey is not incredibly old if I had to guess, but it definitely brings on a character like it is because of that, that American whiskey process where they're using used barrels. So that's actually, I really enjoyed it. I was very impressed with that whiskey. Okay. I think, have you guys reviewed that one? I thought you maybe did. Yeah, we have. It was a while. It was uh, not too long ago. I mean, within the last or about six months ago, maybe something like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let me minimize my chat here. I'll expand my window there i can't see the chat so i'm going to get into scott's a sample here i'm going to write it on a whiteboard and i'll type it in for those that uh tell me if i need to look away scott <laughs> yeah look uh almost okay look away looking away all right john's looking away and this is what he's got in sample a I'll type it in there as well for those that are maybe listening and not watching. Okay, you can turn around. You got your chat minimized? Yep, chat's gone. You can type away. Okay. 
All right. You know, I should have brought out one of my little Scotch Test Dummies whiskey hats here. I didn't bring one in here. I'm having a hard time getting the nose. This air conditioner is blowing right on me. <laughs> I don't know. How, I don't, you guys are in Kansas? Yep. Yeah, Wichita, Kansas. So I don't know how the weather is in Kansas. Here in Southern California, it's still 85 degrees, so it's still pretty warm out. Oh, it's uh, no, it's been it's 47 outside here now. Woo! Yeah, I was just up in Vancouver last week, and I was not ready for the cold. <laughs> you know, if we don't get it; doesn't get anywhere near cold where I am until the dead of winter, and even then, it's not cold. I mean, you're maybe getting into the 50s at night and stuff for the most part. If it's real cold, the 40s. So we don't we don't deal with cold well. Yeah, hmm, uh, yeah, you wouldn't deal with forty seven real good. Uh, howdy, Richie Z. I see you saying hi. So I'm smelling this. It smells. It's got a lot of fruit on it. Hmm. I like the nose. It's very fruity. Got some deep fruit. Some cherry. A little bit of apple in there, like a little bit of lighter fruit hiding back there. A little bit of vanilla, caramel. I mean, definitely has a lot of the, the bourbon-like characters here. I feel like maybe I'm getting a teeny tiny touch of wood, but not a lot. I'm getting my nose pretty far in here, and it's not burning me, so I don't know how high proof it is. Maybe hopefully a little bit lower so I don't get cooked here, but let's get a taste. <laughs> I better pull the bottles down too here that I got for you so I can do the reveal to you like you did. Now, really, in mine, I went probably flavor profiles. I started with the lowest flavor profile working up because I didn't want to give you a real strong something and then try to give you a weaker one later. Yeah, I'm telling you right now, I saw your samples. A, B, and C look good. D is scaring me, Scott. D is scaring me. <laughs> Uh, no reason to be scared. I can tell you right now, D is not something that's in my wheelhouse. If anybody can see this. <laughs> <laughs> so let me get one more taste here. Yeah, a lot of the same. A lot of proof isn't too high. I'm guessing we're in that mid 80s range, mid 85, 90 maybe. 85 feels closer. Um, got a little bit of cinnamon. Those that's those sweet fruity notes are there in the front. Finish wise, dissipates pretty quick. Kind of like a medium mouth feel. It kind of doesn't hang around too long. You're left with a little bit of that, a little bit of bitter character, like the tannins from the oak. I wouldn't say you taste a lot of wood. I feel like if there's more bitterness than there is woody character. I like it though. Uh, for those that are just tuning in, um, I typed in the chat a little ways up. If you want to go look what John is drinking, he's got his chat minimized. So he doesn't know what I told everybody. A little bit of burn on the back of the back of the throat. Definitely nothing going down. I would say predominantly it's got a lot of the sweeter notes up front. And that's kind of where the most of the flavor is. A little bit of brown sugar, a lot of that darker fruit character. It's good. It's smooth. Very drinkable. So let's see here. What's the thing? What were the questions we were going over? So like I said, proof wise, I'm feeling maybe 85 ish, give or take. Um, I think age on this one's a tough, I wouldn't say that it's, it's very old. Um, I feel I don't, there's not a lot of woody characters. The burn that I do get in the back of the throat is a touch harsh. So maybe it's a, a bit younger. Maybe we're like in that I hate guessing ages. I'm always wrong, but uh, <laughs> I'm hey, we're, guessing we're just having fun, just talking. Yeah, and blind when you're blind. I mean, it's just it's more to show you. Maybe someone with a really experienced palate can can nail some of this stuff. But even me with yours, I'm, I'm you know I'm thinking eight, ten, maybe twelve years old. You know, it's American whiskey. It might only be five or six years old. If I had to guess on that, Mictors, that's probably what it is. But. Yeah. Mictor, that one was kind of a, I shouldn't have given you that one first. That one, that was kind of a cheat, <laughs> but, but no, this is good. It's lighter age. I'm going to say it's in the lower age range, maybe five to six years. Um, price wise. I mean, this feels like it's not, it's good. It's not knocking my socks off. I'm going to say we're maybe in the $30 ballpark. 
Okay. Um, if I had to, I mean, distillery wise, I don't, I'm terrible at the distillery stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, I can't get that either. If I took a shot in the dark, I mean, it feels a little, maybe a little Buffalo Tracy to me, but. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> well, we got the Buffalo Tracy. Yeah, you did. Uh people a, are, people are paying six hundred dollars a bottle for that. What do you think? I, you know, man, I mean I've had the the Van Winkle i I think I've had them all at one point or another, and I've always thought they were good, but I was never blown away by them. I mean, it's just good solid whiskey. It's not a it's not a mind blower. And like that bottle retails What's what's MSRP on that? Like, I think sixty nine dollars. Yeah. yeah, seventy bucks. I mean, <clears throat> and it's, don't get me wrong; it's good whiskey. It's just yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly, and that's really why I led off with that one just to show you because I know going in blind, I knew what you'd say. Uh, you know, it's a it's a good bourbon. You know, 46 percent ABV, uh, nice bourbon notes. Yeah, average, and that's what average that's where, bourbon. And that's where it ends, man. And that's, yeah, and that's, what, that's just it. And what knocks my socks off is there's no end and it's only getting worse to people paying three, yeah. four, five, six hundred bucks for this stuff. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. And what annoys me to no end, and I'm sure it's like this for most of you guys out there, is that I just want to drink the stuff. Like, I, I'm not here to sell it. I just want to buy it so I can drink it. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, honestly, I've got, um, well, well or 12. And unfortunately, you know, it's going up as well, but I've had several times I've had that Pappy Van Winkle right next to Weller's 12 side by side. And I can't tell the difference. I can't tell the difference. Yeah. A lot of people say that. I mean, obviously everybody does the, the poor man's Pappy with the, with the antique and the <clears throat> Weller 12 blended. And I mean, from what I've heard, it's, it's pretty close. Yeah. And I've done I've done a side by side with Weller Twelve and Antique before too, and I always pick the Antique. I think it tastes better <laughs> personally. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, probably the ABV of it. And you know, there's a there's a store here in town that has the uh, Weller usually has the Weller Twelve, um, and they're selling it for one hundred and forty nine dollars a bottle. Wow! And I said, and when I was in there and I saw it, and it, it's a store I frequent quite a bit. I'm like, I, I go, are people buying it for that? And they said, oh, yeah, we sell a lot of it. Yeah, you know, I, I get out to, I mean, I work in L.A., so I get out there quite a bit. And a lot of those, you know, there's a lot of money running around L.A. So I get, when I pop into some of these liquor stores on occasion, you know, I see these things. Like I saw Weller 12 not too long ago for $1.99 sitting right next to a bottle of, it was either, I think it was the Pappy 15 year or maybe the 20. And the, that was, you know, two or three grand sitting next to the $200 uh -huh. Weller. And it's just like good lord and i asked the guy like does this stuff sell and he's like absolutely i wouldn't he's like you know and it, really what it stems from is that they they have to make money on it because they force them to buy like their weeded vodka and stuff to even get the stuff so i mean i kind of understand the position they're put in too yeah so okay well, I'm, ready for for my, uh, I'm ready for my b sample let me uh All right. let me hide my chat here so people so i can't see if you want to put it okay all it's right, everybody. I'm going to put in Scott's C or B sample. C. And right, let me just double check on the B. All right. So here we go. All right. They got what you're drinking. This is something I've had, and I might have sent you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll see if I can pick that one out. <laughs> Maybe not. This is this is a uh, like a um, a wine finished rye. And I've had it. It could be. It's either. Well, let me taste it. Let me get some stuff going here before I say too much. There's a heavy, um, almost like a white wine, vermouth, high west, nose, rye in there.
Hmm. Yeah. So I'll go out with a bang that? on that one. I mean, it's just, uh, it's been a while since I've gone to it, but it's, it's sparking either a yippee ki or actually that's what I'm thinking. It's yippee ki -yay. So <clears throat> you're thinking yippee ki -yay. If you're thinking high West, then I know age statements are kind of out of the ballpark because they blend everything. Are you guys, are you a fan of the High West stuff? I know you've done, you've reviewed yeah. several of their whiskeys that I've seen. I think you guys have always rated them pretty highly. Yeah. Yeah. Bart's got a few. I've got, um, I've got Yippie Kaye and uh, Midwinter Night's Dram over here. Bart's got a few of them because he buys the cheaper ones. Actually, he's got the Boo Rye at his house though too, which is one of my favorite ones. But I know he's got the Rendezvous Rye. Um double rye campfire american that's one i really want to try that i have and i keep hearing great things about the campfire i know you guys reviewed that and i haven't been able to i haven't tried it yet so i'm looking forward to getting into that one one of these days yeah i'm just going out on, i mean that's I can't get it out of my mind now. That's immediately what I thought was High West Yippee Ki Yay when I nosed it. All right, you're going for the you're going for the out the park. You're pointing pointing into left field, and calling your shot. <laughs> I could be I could be way off, but all right, you ready? It's it's a rye in a wine barrel. Let me say that much. All right. The reveal is. Does this help you a little bit? It's a High West. <laughs> you're. It definitely is double a rye, rye. But it's not a wine finished. Oh. Yeah. It's their standard double rye. <clears throat> yeah, I wonder what's, uh, boy, it's really sticking out still. I mean, kind of just a really little bit of a, a wine twang to it. You yeah. know, and I'll tell you this. I've had one other bottle of this before, and I liked it. I didn't knock my socks off. This one I liked much, much more than I recall liking it before. And so I don't know if something's different about this this batch, but this one I thought was really, really good. Yeah, it is. It's nice. So in terms of value, I mean, you were guessing at whiskeys that were 60, 50, 60, 70 bucks. So this one goes for, I think, what, 35 maybe? For, uh, probably maybe 40 to 50. I think American Prairie is the cheapest one at 35. American Prairie is the bourbon. I can get American Prairie for 30. I think I can get this for about 32, but yeah. I've definitely seen it go for a lot Good more meat. other places. But I like all right. it. So, yeah, I was really, I was really, really impressed with this bottle in particular. I remember liking it before, but it, this one just was much, much better. And in looking at their website, you know, their High West is always great about disclosing everything that goes into their their whiskeys and batches. I mean, it's really cool what they do with that and that they're just they're open about it. They're yeah. sourcing the stuff. They tell you where they source each whiskey from, what they're blending. And the only thing they hold off on is how much of each whiskey they're blending together. Yeah. But, um, I can't remember what they said was in this one because it was convoluted. The bottle says one thing. The website kind of said another. And the, and the website had two different things on it. So I was getting a little confused. I think well, I just if, 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 if it, it might vary from batch to batch as well. It did, but it said specifically what it was. Like usually when they do batches, they'll say that. On this one in particular, I think it said it was a blend of um, a, on one spot on the website it said it was a 16 year old whiskey blended with like a two year old, and then on the lower half of the site it said it was a seven year old whiskey blended with I think their new make whiskey like rye or something like that. So I don't know where it ends up. All I know is it's good and it's cheap, so I'm happy. <laughs> All right, I'm going to minimize my chat, and I'm going to pour sample B, which looks a touch darker than sample A was. Okay, just don't look at the screen. Not looking. All right, here's what uh, John's got next. Still showing it? Don't look up yet? Give everybody a few seconds. Okay. Okay. And I'll type it in as well, just in case somebody's uh, watching. All right, I'm listening, the chat. not watching. Yeah. <laughs> All right, chat's down, so type away. Let me see here. We got. Hmm. 
You've got a nose that uh, right away I don't feel is too much off of the first nose. We got some fruity characters up front, dark fruit, a little bit of that cherry apple character in there. There's a slightly, slightly maybe like a stringent quality in here mm. on the back. Yeah, could be. I think I got that one on this one. Yeah, there's almost like, and it's, I, I always try to parse these when I say stuff like this because it comes off sounding bad, but there's almost a slight bit of like nail polish remover in there. Yeah. Like, no, there's nothing wrong with that. We've got that on, you get that on a lot of whiskeys. I like that smell though. I mean, blended with those fruity characters, it actually smells really good. So let's get into the taste here. Hmm. And I tried to pick, I went back through your videos and looked to make sure, see if you'd had these before or not, but it's always hard to tell. Oh yeah. Look, with you guys, I didn't even attempt <laughs> with your 500 plus, whatever you've got going on videos. <laughs> While I'm tasting, we should talk a little bit about that too, because you guys next weekend have your fifth anniversary event coming up. So why don't you talk about that for a little bit? Yeah, that's true. Uh, here in Wichita, October 19th. Actually, we so our first review, review number one, posted October 18th of 2013. So we're coming up on our five-year anniversary. Uh, tomorrow will be review number 530. We've done more, but that's our joint together reviews. We've done several individual. We started doing quick hitters with samples that we would get. You know, John, if you sent us this sample... Instead of trying to review it in a in a review where we were both together, we just started doing those solo just to help out, get some some more reviews up and stuff. So, but anyway, October, there's details on ScotchTestDummies.com on the events tab for next weekend. Anybody that's near, uh, we've got a steak dinner and Scotch Malt Whiskey Society tasting Friday night. Saturday night is more of a casual hangout at a uh, barbecue uh, patio store where they do cooking and stuff like that. And it's BYOB in there basically. But then we're also going to have some whiskey samples from a, a distributor in Kansas. It's going to do a world of whiskey tour kind of sample. That's very, very cool. And congratulations on hitting five years, man. That's such a cool thing. I hope, uh, I hope I can be doing the same thing down the road here. <laughs> Thanks. You guys yeah, are up, I mean, you guys are up over 8,000 subscribers now, like 80, what was it? 8,400? Uh, like 8,400 or 8,500 now. Yeah. That's slow, awesome too. Man. Slow but sure. Hey man, that's what wins the race. <laughs> oh, and I didn't mention tonight too, and when we're talking about subscribers, oh, you guys can see my daughter's teddy bear over here. Um, <laughs> I must have bought the computer. Uh, in terms of subscribers, if you guys got anybody that you know you like likes whiskey, if you wouldn't mind, share the channel. Let's see if we can get a few more subscribers tonight. I was before we started, I was two subscribers shy of 500. I'd love to be able to hit 500 with you guys tonight. So. If you wouldn't mind helping me out and, and seeing if anybody that you know likes whiskey would enjoy some reviews and things like that, then share the channel. I'd appreciate it. Um, let's get back to this whiskey, though. <laughs> what do you think? And give us some thoughts. So um, this one definitely is a lot more bold than than what we were drinking with the, the Pappy um, or the Van Winkle. Um, much bigger, bolder flavors. Uh I feel like the rye content's higher in here. Obviously, there was no rye content in the last one, so anything is higher than that. But um, definitely a little bit more spicy qualities to it, a little bit of that cinnamon character. Some of those, like, uh, more like the baking spicy stuff in the back end, maybe. Um, definitely higher ABV. You're left with a lingering more of, like, a little woody character to go along with some of that tannic bitterness that it leaves you with. That astringent note I was smelling, I don't particularly taste. Yeah. I think you're pretty much uh, about spot on with everything so far. Hmm. This is one of those whiskeys where I feel like, not necessarily that I've had this particular whiskey before, but that I know the distillery. Like, when you tell me what it is, I'm gonna be like, damn it, I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> But I can't peg it at the moment. 
Hmm. Well, and a few other channels uh, tuning in as well. Swami is here from Melted in Montreal. Uh, Jason, the Mash and Drum, is tuning in. Um, who else have I seen in commenting? My Bert Scott, my Bourbon Journey. Hmm. Let me grab that bottle real quick. Are you Let me take a few more review? guesses at things. Oh yeah, Midwinter Night's Dram. I just picked one up. Uh, I don't know. I know. Yesterday, the day I before. saw you just post a picture of it, and I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> I hope he doesn't drink. Try it before we do this." Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's definitely, definitely much more rich. You could definitely tell there's some more age on it than uh, than uh, not. Um, mm -hmm. I can't remember if I've had it before. I'm I'm trying to cycle back through my my whiskey memory here, and I I feel like I maybe never even had a Midwinter Night's Dram before. But I did just get a bottle. So this is uh, last year's, or one of last year's, Act 5, Scene 7. Uh, for those that don't know, it's a blend of straight rye whiskeys finished in French oak port barrels. And I was really surprised how much influence the port barrels have on the, and that's probably a lot of that, the kind of those different notes, the tannic notes, the uh, astringent. I think it brings out a little bit, you get a little bit of that port sweetness as well, though, with it. Mix yeah, it, it definitely has a lot of sweetness. It definitely has a lot of sweetness up front. Like it, it it's almost unnatural to what you're used to with say like a bourbon. It, the way the sweetness kind of hits your palate. I definitely didn't pick up that it was finished, and I haven't drank a ton of finished whiskey, so I'm really trying to expand my. Uh, excuse me, I'm really trying to expand on what I do my my different whiskeys I try when I'm trying to try more finished stuff because I definitely like it. I like what it provides. I like that. You know, with something like like an Angel's Envy is a good example in that for a relatively inexpensive whiskey at a pretty low proof, you can get a lot of flavor out of it when you're finishing them in some of these different types of barrels. So I think they kind of lend well to, um, you know, people that don't like higher proof stuff. You know, if you yeah. don't like the burn of a higher proof whiskey, but you like the flavor, added flavor that the higher proof gets you, it's kind of a good middle ground. When I was looking, I, uh, it was kind of small print, but I think that one was 49.3%. ABV. I didn't even guess the ABV. Yeah, I would have said, yeah, I would have thought it. I mean, it's it's great to say it after the fact, but I would have said it's probably around 100. I mean, it definitely wasn't super high, but it, it definitely had a more much more significant burn than the Van Winkle did. That's for certain. Yeah, I, th so. I think at one point you said it, it, it felt a little bit higher than the, uh, than the Van Winkle did. All right, everybody. Let me scroll through before we get on the next one. Here's some Q&A yeah, in the you chat betcha. and say, hey, everybody. Yeah, like Scott was calling out, Eric Waits here, Jason Fisk, hey buddy, Richie Z, Mash and Drum. I haven't actually had a chance to interact with you yet, so one of these days we got to get together and chat. I know uh, a lot of these guys are are having some good times watching your videos. Uh, Scott from My Bourbon Journey came in. What's up, Scott? We were talking about you earlier when we were talking about I did my first uh, blind review kind of live stream with you. Swami's in there. What's up, buddy? And actually, someone said, "What's how's Scotland? Who I don't know who's in here from Scotland. I don't know if actually I wonder. I know that uh, Daniel from Whiskey Throttle is over in Scotland right now. I saw him post some pictures with uh, with Roy over there when he flew in. So hopefully he's having a great time. Um, yeah, guys, thanks for joining us tonight. If you have, if you're just coming in, we're just doing a little bit of blind tasting here. We sent each other some samples, and we're just having a good time, kind of going through and guessing at what we're tasting. And Scott." is actually very good at this. I don't know if any of you have seen it, but if you haven't, go scroll back to the Scotch Test Dummy stuff and find uh, when Scott did his challenge from Roy, Aquavite, oh. uh, when Roy did his blind challenge. He, he did awesome, better than I could have ever done, especially since it was Scotch. I would bomb that terribly, but... <laughs> <laughs> I got lucky. Once I got... I, I, I had one from... There's, what was there, five samples? I had one which was, I knew was the oldest, but then I had the kind of process of elimination from there. And I think I got lucky, but. I think it's so cool how Roy does that, man. I mean, he does such a great job and puts so much thought into the whole process and it's so polished, you know, it's, it's very, very impressive. So let's see here. Are you, uh, are you sniffing C over there? I did. I poured C. I've got uh, my chat covered up here. I can't see it. So if you want to tell everybody what it is, very rich nose, a little bit higher ABV. Smells like a bourbon again initially. A lot of, a uh, little bit older ones, a lot richer. A 
A lot of cinnamon. Higher ABV. Maybe. It's not burning my nose, but it's higher than the... Uh, what was oh, the first one was only like 41, 42%. It's yeah, definitely higher than that. Low. If nose is an indicator of, of age, it, I mean, it just the nose feels a little bit older on it. Very nice, Rich. It's got great color. I don't know if anybody, oh, you know, yeah, that should be coming through. Hopefully, you can see that. Which there's always a lot of conversation about color as well. You, you, we know in bourbon they can't add color. Um, and generally, you, color may or may not tell you something about the whiskey. You just, you, it's just bottle to bottle, really, or, you know, release to release. Yeah, absolutely. I think everybody gets hung up on color so much. And it really, at the end of the day, I mean, it does give you a little bit of information, but I don't feel like it gives you a ton. No, uh -uh. and we don't, Especially. we hardly, we hardly comment you know, on color about the only time is if you have something that's really pale or something in a bourbon, that's really, really dark colored, really rich colored that, you know, is natural. Uh, sometimes you get a, something that's sherry cast and you kind of get the reddish tint to it, you know, and so that if it's natural colored and you get that, you can tell the sherry cask influence. Yeah. I feel like at least in bourbon, Color might tell you a little bit more than other whiskeys, but not much. I mean, you know, especially I actually in my review, I did I let, released this last week. I did a rum and this rum was super light in color. And I had talked to the the owner of the company and they source all their rum from Panama. They're an American company that sources the rum. But they um, the rum's so light because they a they don't add color, but B, they're using all used barrels. So the, the used barrel doesn't in you know give it as much color as you normally would and so other I mean, most rums are added color anyways like like a lot of the scotch stuff is so looks like you're chewing on that one <coughs> that's really rich high abv that's like elijah craig barrel proof or it could be one of the blanton barrel proofs um it's not the highest ecbp i've had if it's ecbp A lot of good, rich oak, cinnamon. You got any uh, idea what you're thinking on age? It's, um, I mean, it's coming off. If it's ECBP, it's 12. I'd, I'd still stick with that somewhere 12, maybe even up to up to 15 if it's something different. May uh, I'd go 10. Like you say, it's hard to tell. I'd say it's in between 10 and 15, which is a pretty broad range. Now, I know you're saying you're feeling this is higher proof. And I know once you get over a certain point, it's damn near impossible to tell where you're at. But what are you thinking? Let's, if you had to pick a number, where are you thinking? 62, 63, maybe. It's not the high 60s, which I've got, you know, in the ECBPs. I haven't had enough of the Blanton um, picks in the. It feels it feels Elijah Craig barrel proof to me. One of the uh, releases from last year that's lower ABV, probably. All right. Is that what your answer is? Are we going with? Yeah. Man, you pegged it. <laughs> <laughs> I told you guys Scott was the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to uh I hate to declare it, but I mean there's just if if you're feeling it, you're feeling it. Oh yeah. And I think for me, I'm not gonna say Elijah Craig Barrel Proof is undeniable, but I think for me it's one of my favorite whiskeys. And I think it's generally a little bit easier to pick out just because it has such a unique flavor profile. The age profile on it is is pretty it stands out, you know, and it's, I mean, I saw you chewing on it over there, and that's what I always do with that whiskey. It's just so oily and thick and viscous and just full of flavor. So it's definitely one of my faves. And that particular bottle was my very first review. So I thought it'd be fun to throw that one in there. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, fact is, I, I watched, I think you sent me the link and you were like, hey, if you don't mind, can you watch my review? And I watched that, you know, and I said, hey, good. You got good, 
you know, presentation, good lighting, good, good camera, good video quality. You did good review in the whiskey. I mean, you look good from the get go F a far cry from what we started with, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, at one point you should do that. We should, you should you should do a video of you and Bart going back and uh, watching your first video or something. <laughs> um, you know, I'd say that when you do get into some of them, the first one, the first ECBP we had was 69.7%, one of the older bottlings. And I've got one of the um, the George Stagg BTAC editions, the 72.05% ABV. When you get up there, you can tell. I mean, I could tell this was high, but wasn't that high. So, and I don't remember what it was. What was this one? This one's This is 130 60, proof, so 65%. 65, okay. Well, it's hiding it a little bit. Yeah, that's a little bit. That's good. Yeah, I was super impressed when I when I opened it. I mean, the first, I've always liked Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, but I was I really like, I hadn't had it in a while when I bought this bottle. And uh, I just, I love it, man. It's one of my favorite whiskeys. Mm -hmm. And especially for the price. I mean, I saw it going, and this is unusual, of course, but I saw it going for $49 just today. Very nice. So, I mean, you, you can't deny up? you can't deny that whiskey for 50 bucks. Yeah, I know. I, I just bought one today, the, the new batch. So yeah, I'm happy to, you know, I can generally get it between 50 is unheard of, but I mean I can generally get it like 60, 65 bucks, and that's that's fine by me. I'll pay that all day. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, let me do I have the time for me to look away. Let me let me minimize my chat here. Chat's down. You tell me when I need to turn my head here. Okay. Have you poured it yet? Yep, it's poured and waiting. Actually, I spilled a drop. All right. Don't look up. All right, averting my eyes. And then again, I'll uh Type it in there for if anybody's watching the chat, but not the screen. I don't know why they would be doing that, I guess. <laughs> All right, I showed them. All right, I can turn my head. Yep. You got All the, right. And you got your chat minimized too. Chat's down. You can type away. Oh, this one is much different. This feels like something I know nothing about. <laughs> hmm i'm gonna have to take a minute with this man this is this is foreign territory i feel like <laughs> i didn't see this one in in the on, in your reviews as having uh, reviewed it i don't know what i'm smelling <laughs> not a lot of sweetness there i mean it's very hmm. what is that i don't know if you yeah, need no, it i don't know did you did you have any palate cleansers or uh, any water or anything are you drinking i had between? water at some point but yeah maybe a good idea to throw a little water down here I mean, there's like a hidden amount of sweetness in here. I can't lie. I don't know what I'm smelling. Uh, for those that didn't catch it earlier, uh, we sent each other four blind samples. Uh, John is on his third one that I sent him. And I started kind of uh, lower profile flavor palette wise moving up. So he's gone from uh, Van Winkle 12 year lot B to High West Midwinter Nights Dram Act 5, Scene 7. And now his blind sample, which I just typed into the uh, chat a few seconds ago, if you want to see what this one is. He does not know. Yeah. And the, the rules of the game that I gave Scott when we, when I, if you asked him if he wanted to do this, was there are no rules. You can send yep. whatever you want. So. <laughs> Well, and I asked because I was like, are you just wanting to stick with bourbons or because I got a lot of stuff? Nope. Nope. I told you you're welcome to mess with me. And I feel like you have you <laughs> gone outside my wheelhouse. I don't know what this is, man. It's got this. It's got this, this very distinct smell to it that I can't put my finger on. Mm hmm. 
Hmm. I think I'm just gonna get. I'm gonna stop trying to smell it. I'm just gonna get a little on the palate here and see where we get. Yeah. Uh, for those that are chatting, they're up to this is batch one of the whiskey. They're up to the. I think they just released batch three of this one. I mean, first thing, definitely higher proof. A lot of heat on the tongue. Touch of heat going down the chest. Very warming. Um, it's hanging around. It it tastes a lot like how it smells, which is going to be difficult for me to tell you what I'm talking about because I don't know how to describe <laughs> it. This is this one's really a hidden gem that um, a lot of people don't know about. Some some do, but not a lot. And it's still reasonably priced. I mean, I feel like let me get some color in here. I mean, it's not incredibly dark. I don't have a good light source in here to kind of put behind this. I don't know if you guys can see this. Got a deeper golden color to it, amber hue. Not very sweet. Like as you drink it, there's a little bit of sweetness on the back of the palate, but definitely doesn't stick around long. There's a little bit of lingering sweetness. I mean, it has a, uh, hmm. I mean, it definitely sticks around with you though. I'm still getting a lot of flavor, a lot of changes with that flavor. So it's definitely complex and interesting. I just think like whatever it is, is definitely out of my wheelhouse. It feels very scotchy to me, so. Yeah, it's so yeah, it's not a bourbon. It is a scotch. It's a single malt. I'll tell you that much. Um, and it is it is wine cask, um, exclusively wine cask. So you get when you get into scotches, when you get most scotches say are aged in an ex bourbon cask. So I mean they've got a flavor profile. Sometimes they take those and they age them in the bourbon cask. And then for a short spell, they age them in a wine cask and you get just hints of some of the wine. So this is one that has exclusively been matured in a wine cask, never in an ex bourbon barrel. So you've got the single malt, you know, whiskey scotch only from the wine barrel. Yeah, I mean, I wish I could just put tell you what this one flavor is. I'm getting a ton of, and I don't know what it is yet. It's I sherry. definitely feel sherry wine. Yeah, you think that's what that that one character is? Uh, yeah, it's predominant in this one. Yeah, I mean, you should it should be like um, raisins, plums, dates, figs, the darker fruits. See, what's throwing me on that particular character is it almost has a fruity quality to it but it's not sweet like it doesn't have the sweetness to go with it and i feel like i don't know if it's messing me up having had a couple of whiskeys that were a bit sweeter before this but uh i feel like that's just making my mind go in the wrong direction <laughs> have you had you know, anything whole... have you had anything like that before i don't feel like i have i mean i haven't I, I don't know if you've seen this, but I mean, I said this in a lot of my reviews when I've reviewed a couple, I've only reviewed, I think, two scotches on my channel, and I have not had a lot of scotch in my life. I've, the two scotches I've reviewed are probably the only scotch I've had in the last five years, I and mean, I just, I don't drink a lot of scotch. I have a lot of scotch, though, now. <laughs> I've acquired quite a bit, and it, I, I throw them in there for reviews every now and again, um, but... <clears throat> I'm just not an expert, man. I don't know a lot about the different, fin I mean, scotch is just such a much broader world than bourbon. It's a lot easier to get your handles on bourbon because bourbon, there's just so specific rules to it. You, you, you can't finish it in so many, there's only a few ways to finish it and yada, 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 yada. But there's so many different ways to treat a scotch that can just totally change the flavor profile. I think for me, the flavor profiles on scotch are just so much broader than, than American whiskeys for the most part. Yeah, and, and the scotches I have reviewed on my channel were not God's gift to scotch. I mean, I think I reviewed uh, the like the entry level Tomatin 
I think here it's called the uh, what do they call the one here? Dualkis or yeah. whatever it's called. Yeah, like a 25, 20, 25 dollar bottle. Yeah, it was super inexpensive. And then I reviewed a Wolfburn Aurora. And I thought I kind of liked the Tomatin when I first drank it. And then after I reviewed the Tomatin, I put them side by side. Oh, I thought I liked the Tomatin. And then when I reviewed the Wolfburn, I drank them side by side and I realized I did not like the Tomatin very much. I like the Wolfburn a bit better. So <laughs> I've really found it. I found it to be helpful to do these things side by side. Like it kind of oh, helps yeah. me get a grasp on what I'm tasting because now I can compare the two and really see the differences. Because in my mind, those two whiskeys tasted similar, but they really didn't. They were nothing alike. But I mean, to a degree they were, but they weren't very, very similar. And I didn't realize that in my head until I tasted them next to each other. So it's, it's kind of a good exercise that I've really started trying to do since I started this channel is after I, after I've done the reviews, just for my own purposes, I like to drink things next to each other and just see the subtle differences between the two. I find it super helpful. Yeah. And especially if it's been a while since you've had one, you know, we get that a lot. We review a whiskey and someone will ask, well, how does that compare to, you know, X? Like, well, it's been a while since I've had X, but that would be neat to see side by side. Or sometimes you think, well, this is this one's not as good as X is. And then when you have them side by side, you're like, okay, I was wrong. <laughs> this one's yeah. better than X was, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In your mind, so, you, you your mind's a weird thing, you know? Like, you remember, like, oh, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, that's the best whiskey in the world. And you, yeah. you try to compare everything to it, your memory of it, and then you realize, maybe my memory of it wasn't so great. <laughs> <laughs> not right, not so saying anything have, about Elijah I don't know if you've even heard of Tam Du. I think I might have seen it. I've never heard of it, no. Yep. Uh, so this is a batch drink. This one's 58.8%. It's probably, I think, 8 to 10 years old. I guess I didn't uh, wait around to ask you that. But exclusively matured in sherry casks. So, and, and you can tell, I mean, I don't think by the color that it's that old either. Yeah. But, so what you're getting there, like I say, is not most some will be double matured where they spend the majority of their life in a bur ex bourbon cask and then they're transferred to a uh, sherry cask so this yeah. was batch one and this is really i think when i bought this one is like 70 dollars. i think they're still like they've gone up a little bit they're like 80 90 dollars now here so but it's really a, a hidden gem yeah i really need to i really need to get some more scotch under my belt and kind of have some of these flavor characteristics down like i i always i mean i always say in the reviews like i'm just doing this so you guys are taking the journey with me but i'm not in any sense of the word an expert on scotch so don't take my word for it yeah <laughs> you know i didn't when i was like for the with that wolf burn i was drinking it and i didn't really find a lot of bourbon characters in it when i was doing the review and obviously i didn't know what it was when i was reviewing it I didn't find those characters until I drank it side by side with that Tomatin. And then I re they really stood out. Then I could really taste the bourbon in it. And I really didn't pick up on that before. So yeah. I really like doing that exercise. Anyways, let's see. Let's uh, let's take a quick second here and see. I don't know what you guys are drinking. I'm looking through the chat here and I'm not seeing anybody talking about it. What are you guys drinking tonight? What's what's on the table? Are you guys joining us? And if you are, what's what's in front of you? I always love hearing what everybody's got got to drink for the evening. But anyways, yes, I, I really got to drink more scotch because like I enjoy the flavor of this. It's just my mind. I can't wrap my mind around it yet. Like I just don't have the the uh, history with it to be able to like put my finger on what the things I'm tasting are yet. Right. Yep. And I'll tell you, my problem is, is I don't have any friends that drink scotch. So it's always like an easy way to you can drink scotch with someone who's got a lot of history and experience with it. They'll kind of talk you through the things you're tasting and it makes it a lot easier. And nobody I know drinks scotch. So it's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going on this journey by myself. You know, it's really it's uh, with us. It was on the job training. And granted, we didn't have a lot of experience when we got started either. But when we first started, we were we were like, we're the scotch test dummies. We do scotch. And we did that for a while and we were like, you know, we're in America and there's all these bourbons and bourbon is America's whiskey. And they're cheaper than a lot of the scotches. Maybe we should be reviewing bourbons as well. And I was like, you know, I really don't like bourbon. It's too sweet. And, you know, then you get, you, and, but we started doing it. And then, you know, you started doing rise and you did Japanese whiskeys and we've done Indian whiskeys, Canadian whiskeys. They're all good. 
there's i mean there's, there's good whiskey out there all over yeah there is good whiskey everywhere <laughs> except in vancouver for you vancouverites or whatever you call yourselves up there hook an american brother up and tell me where the good whiskey is because i was searching around that place when i was up there i didn't have a lot of extra time i'll give you that but when i was up there i couldn't find much of anything that was reasonably priced <laughs> But no, there's tons of good whiskey made everywhere. And I, I really want to start appreciating other whiskeys. You know, I've, like I've been, I still, I've said this for a long time, but I've, I've been drinking bourbon and rye for a long time. That's something that's just been a part of my, you know, drinking experience since I was younger. I've always had bourbon around. I mean, that's just something we always did. But, you know, <clears throat> scotch was just something I never got into. I think I had a bottle of, what's the lowest level Johnny Walker? Is it red? Yeah. And I hated it. And so I think I just tried to avoid it after that. I thought that scotch was terrible when I tasted it. And I don't know if it actually is or not. But at the time I experienced it, I thought it was horrible. And I choked my way through it. And I yeah, think it left a bad taste in my mouth. It's not the best stuff on the planet. That's for sure. No. But when you're a young 20-year-old man, what are you supposed to do, Scott? Yeah. <laughs> well, I started uh, Johnny Walker Black. Started me on uh, you know my whiskey journey. I, and I switched from it to red for all just because red was cheaper. Yep. You know, early on, and I drank red for quite a while. I got I got a bottle of red up there. Matter of fact, I got red and black and green up there in the corner. There you go. So let's see what we got up here. Pour. Just finished a pour of Pikesville. That's uh, Peter White's drinking Pikesville. That's a great whiskey. I can't wait. I have had a bottle of Pikesville. I think, if I'm not mistaken. My whiskey banner on the top of my channel has a bunch of bottles that, uh, that I took a picture of just to kind of put up for the banner. I think Pikesville is on there and it has never come up for a review in the eight <laughs> or nine months I've been doing this. And it's making me <laughs> upset. I really want to review that whiskey and it's just not getting its number drawn. So um, someone says Pikesville Canadian. No, I think Pikesville is made at Heaven Hill. Um Pikesville is supposedly more aged, higher proof Rittenhouse. Yeah, that's what they say. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, Peter White answered no Heaven Hill. There you go. Uh, lot four. Start with Lot four. I don't know where everybody's at on this. All right, I'm not going to try to read these. I'm confused. Um, <laughs> let's let's get Scott onto his last sample. I think you're on D, right? Uh, yep. I've got it poured. And just, I don't know where you're at or where you want to be. We're at the hour mark. I don't know where, where you keep for time frame wise. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> We're not going all night, but we can keep going. No problem. We don't need to rush. Yeah, we got, um, we got a sample each left. So, all right. So, I'm going to tell, is your chat minimized? Yes. Now, I'm going to tell you that this whiskey or was an afterthought. This pour was an afterthought. I did not initially have this. I think when I, I sent you a picture, I think when uh yeah, with three samples and then four three samples. Up. And so I, right after I did that, I was like, oh, I could fit one more in this box. So I did. So we'll see what you think of it. I'm gonna tell you that it's. I'm gonna give you a little hint up front that it's rather unique. Yeah, uh, nose is really rich, really, really full, higher ABV, a lot of oak. Um, it feels older, almost reminded me of an orphan barrel right off the bat. Great color to it as well, which we talked about. Uh, maybe it means something, maybe it doesn't. Smells like a, a bourbon or some sort of a... Boy, it's got a sweet undertone, though. Lighter. What is it? A little bit of rye. Maybe orange zest. <clears throat> and I'm using uh, my whiskey dick coin as well. I just talked to Bill the other night. We were emailing back and forth, and I've got mine on the way. So hopefully it'll be here <laughs> soon. I try my Swami, best. Swami's probably about stuff. the only one. Well, Swami probably ought to be up uh, for getting them. I'm glad everybody's finally doing it. Me and you talked about this real early on when I started my channel, and you were talking to me about you guys doing the coins, and you were the only ones doing them. And I always thought it was a great idea to kind of have, you know, the whiskey tube world. Everybody had their own coin, and everybody had a good time collecting them and getting them from everybody. And it's kind of a good way to support the channels and stuff. And I'm yeah. glad it finally caught on. 
Yeah. Yeah. And we'd been encouraging people and, you know, we talked to a, you know, a couple guys and they kind of, they, I mean, basically they said they didn't want to infringe on us because we had started it and was doing it. And we were like, no, really it's, you know, they're, you know, we sell them, everybody sells them for $10. It's cheap. A lot of people feel, well, I can buy it for $10. They really help support the channels. But, you know, I'd also point out, I said, I think it leads to where people would then want a coin from everybody. You know, yeah. they want the Trini and C coin. They want the Blind Whiskey Reviews coin. They want Whiskey Dick's coin. They want our coin. So... That feels... I don't know. I'm getting a little bit sweeter rye note as well on this one. All right. Ooh. That's reminiscent of something I've had. Really nice, sweet caramel brulee on the finish. <clears throat> You're going to have to definitely think about this one. <laughs> Nice caramels. There's a rye. It's a rye, either a rye or a high rye mash bill. But man, there's some nice sweet undertones with it as well. A little bit of toasted marshmallow. Not uh, not extremely high ABV, maybe 50s. <clears throat> How you feeling on any age? You feel like there's any age on that? Um, no. It's not the orphan barrels. The nose as rich as it was almost hit me like a one of the twenty-two or twenty-three year old rhetorics or something like that. But it's not. It's not that. Um. Uh, gosh, that's hard. Uh, I, I was twelve to fifteen years, maybe. 10 to 12 years, somewhere in there. Yeah, it's been a while been... since I've gone to the um, <laughs> Michter's Toasted Barrel, but it's almost the sweet rye, a little bit of the toastedness to it. Have you been able to get, I know the, I've been seeing posts of the Mictor's Toasted Barrel everywhere. It seems like it's, it's release has been widespread these days. Were you able to get one of this year's release? No, I got last year's rye. My, uh, I was just at my liquor store today. They thought they were getting one of the toasted bourbons in, but they didn't. And I haven't seen any around here. Hmm. This one is, is definitely a mind bender. I'm not going to lie to you, Scott. <laughs> huh. I like it. It's it's very good. It's very rich. It's very sweet. Um, more rye notes. I think it's a, I would go with a rye whiskey, I believe. Maybe, yeah, 50 to 55% ABV. A um, lot of cinnamon along with it. Uh, higher ABV to me, very similar, I thought, to this was the um, Thomas H. Handy Sazerac Rye from a couple years ago. 
but I think it was a higher ABV. All right. Are you ready? Do you want to know? Sure. <laughs> All right. So you're going to hate me for this, but I decided after I would given poured the three original samples that I would follow my own rules and tell you that there was no rules. So sure. this was my own Franken blend, which included <laughs> the largest portion of the Dorley's 12 year, the uh, high West double rye and a splash of knob Creek single barrel. Very nice. No, that's very good. And actually, I mean, I had the rye notes. I had the very, that sweet undertone from that rum coming through. A lot of the cinnamons. That's very, that's actually, it's a very good blend. I would love, you know, I screwed up and I should have made more of it. I only made enough to put in your sample bottle. And uh, I wish I would have made myself a sample because <laughs> I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I frankened this thing up. I didn't, don't, I don't want you to think I didn't put any effort in this. It took me like an hour to make that thing. <laughs> but but uh, I took some time. I tried a bunch of different blends with different whiskeys, and I put all this stuff together, and and I found something I thought would be good, but I didn't have any time for me to taste it after it had marinated for a while. So I thought you might have a much better experience with it than what I actually blended here. So I just thought it'd be a fun little thing to do, but it tasted decent when I made it. Yeah, it actually, and it is. And I'll tell you, even the, the thing is, the Thomas H. Handy Sazerac that I had was very sweet, a lot of cinnamons, a lot of ginger stuff like that and it was a little bit different um and i was trying to decide if this was a rye from a, a run from a wine barrel but i couldn't really maybe because the rum was too dark i was looking for those lighter vermouth or uh syrah or port type finish sweet notes but yeah that's I'd have very to interesting i'd have to calculate the proof for you um it's probably I mean, the Dorley's is really low, and that's what most of it is. Probably 40. Or, yeah, well, right that can 40. depend. The High West was at 46. And the, obviously, the single barrel is at 60. Yeah. I mean, I would say you're probably somewhere right there in the low 90. No, no, like maybe like 90. Huh. I'd say you're like 47, 48, 49. I mean, maybe getting. We're getting a couple percent shy, maybe a hundred proof. Now I'm going to say something. I just poured your sample D and it smells like someone lit a fire in my house, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> now, now. <laughs> you so said no assume. rule. I gave you a, I gave you a wide range. Now, as I told everyone before Scott shows you this, this, it's super light, whatever it is. It looks like Scott peed in a jar after drinking a lot of water. And this will smells. teach you this will teach you why you don't judge by color. <laughs> so it's very smoky smelling. So let me minimize my chat here so you can uh pop yours in there whenever you're ready and let me know when I need to turn my head here. Yep. Look away. Looking away. I'm sure. Well, I better. I guess I better talk here so they can see it. Uh, <laughs> so everybody's looking at it right now. Yeah, I'm sitting here not saying anything, and I'm like, "Oh shoot!" They probably can't see it. Um. So there it is. All right. Sign is down. All right, and my chat is down, so you and can type away. Down, so I'll type it in here for him as well. So obviously, we've got a peated scotch. I'm guessing. Well, I don't know about scotch. It's definitely smoked, whatever it is. <laughs> have you had have you had any peated scotch? That I have not. Well, peated I mean, wood. I've had it. Whatever's been blended into possibly some of the blended scotches I've had that have a little teeny bit of smoky care. I mean, I think I feel like doesn't the Johnny Walker Red have some kind of peated something or other in it, or maybe the black or yeah, what very doing? very smooth. The black does have. I'm not sure on the red. I've had a blend where I tasted a hint of. I mean, I've never had anything that was just a straight peated whiskey before i'll tell you that i mean <laughs> all i smell is smoke <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to get past it and we'll let me let it let me give it a couple swirls here well there's something else back there i 
I almost smell like I didn't I didn't smell it again. I almost got like a hint of like a I don't know if I smelled mint or it was more like that menthol-y cooling kind of feeling in my nose, but Okay. Hmm. Got a little bit of a burn to it. So maybe we got a little bit of proof here. God, I'm just having a hard time getting my nose past the smoke. I mean, there's a reason this one was saved for last. I'm sure you're about to wreck my palate. Well, and that's why you don't, when you have tastings or you do whiskey, you know, flights, always save the peated whiskey for the tail end. If you have it first, it's just, it, it takes over a lot of your taste buds and your palate. So there's a hint in the back once you get past like that initial, just like ashy kind of smoke note where it kind of turns into like almost a, uh, there's a little bit of savory character back there where you get almost like it smells like barbecue as opposed to just like this ashy smoke. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying to look for other things outside that I'm not getting a ton. And it comes, any little flavors I get, I get them for a millisecond and they're gone. I'm having a hard time finding them again. Like I, for a split second there, I thought I smelled like a band aid. Yeah. People will get that with some of the uh, Isla Pete's, but it took me a long time to warm up to Pete. Um, and it took me a long time to be able to discern other notes than Pete, you know, in whiskeys. Usually if there was Pete in there, it just, it overrode everything else that was in there with it. Was there anything so, in particular you found that kind of helped you get past that? Like any kind of tasting techniques or, or methods of, of tasting the whiskeys that kind of got your palate acclimate or is it just a matter of time, like, and trying things? Yeah. I think it's just on the job training. I think it's just trying different ones and seeing and experience. Um, you know, and at first I'd like to say, I didn't even care for it for Pete at all. Uh, and Bart was buying these Lafroigs and you know, the Ard bags, and I'd just be like, "Oh my God, not another one!" Uh, you know, <laughs> it, it's peated, it's smoked. Okay, what else is there? Nothing. It's killing my palate. Can we? Are we done now? You know, type stuff. And then as you just get into different ones, and you're trying, and you're like, "Okay, there's something different with this one. What is it?" Okay, now there's something with this. One. Okay, well, this one, there's such and such coming out with it. Well, this one, I definitely get more. So, and I'm there now. I, and I've warmed up to the peats, but they're still not my go-tos. A sherried scotch, like the one you just had before this, the Tam Dew Bat Strength. I mean, if I could, if I had one whiskey to choose from for the rest of my life, it'd probably be like a, a sherried scotch, not necessarily the Tam Dew, but I love sherried scotches. Bart loves peated scotches, which is where you're at. So, how do you guys get through it when you're doing these peat shootouts? I mean, you're sitting here, I don't know if you do them all in a day, but you're sitting here drinking so many just next to each other. And I don't, I mean, how does that not wreck your, when you're drinking peat next to peat, does that not wreck your palate? Or is it peat next to bourbon would wreck your palate? Well, um, um, both. But what happens is when you have those side by side, you start to, you get the differences. You're like, yeah. this one is different. A is different than B. Well, okay, well, C, I'm getting you know, X on where I'm not getting that on B. Um, A has a little bit of that. D is completely different. You know, D is that something like that. I mean, just when you have them side by side, you get to, which we didn't expect neither one of us. So, but we learned that when we did them side by side, it actually, the peat gets on your palate and the peat is there. And then you start to tell the differences between them. And uh, yeah. Jason at the mash and drum is asking what the ABV on this one is. I'm, it's in the fifties. I know. I don't know, have you gone on? You haven't gone on the palate yet, have you? Not yet. I mean, I could definitely tell it's a little bit higher because just the burn on the nose is kind of putting it there. I'm starting. I'm trying to get past the. I'm trying to get my nose kind of acclimated to the smoke, so I can kind of try to smell these other things in here. And I'm definitely getting like, like I mentioned, like there's this barbecue note in the back, and it's kind of like this salty, savory. Um, there's a touch of sweetness back there, kind of hiding. Not a lot. Yeah. Let me. Let's get it yeah. on the palate here and see what good. we got. Yeah, I mean, you're spot on so far. So you're doing good. So, you know, with the, with the nosing, there's always try different things with the nosing. I mean, put your nose in there, put your, just run the note, run the glass underneath your nose. Uh, try to smell the top of the glass. Um, one method is for you to uh, have your mouth open, which I don't like. I don't like trying to breathe and get notes while my mouth is open. I don't do it. I actually like my mouth closed better, but what do you got? I mean, obviously up front, it's just, 
the first touch on the palette, it's super ashy. Like it has that very much like ash like character, kind of like mid palette. As it's gone over, the smoke changes. Like then it it changes into like a more it doesn't have that kind of ash character. It turns into more of a. I mean, this, these are super weird descriptors, but like a smoke character. Like it, it rounds out. It lightens up. Some of those other flavors come through, and it tastes more like barbecue towards the back than it does that ashy character up front. Mm-hmm. I definitely need to take another taste of this, though. <laughs> I'm very happy though that I don't hate it. <laughs> that's, that's priority number one. Yeah, and the thing is, one now you've got it on your palate, so the next sip will be different. And I'll tell you right now, the nose is very, very different to me now. Now that I've got the smoke on my palate, I'm smelling more sweetness in this. Um, uh-huh. I can smell, and I don't, I've always struggled with how to describe this, but like that character that I got that told me that the last whiskey was a scotch, I smell that in here. And I don't know what that character is, but like whatever that, that definitively scotch like character is, I smell it in here now. And I totally didn't before. Right. That's probably the malt, the, the malted yeah. barley. Like it totally stands out now, and I couldn't get a whiff of it before. <laughs> very, very interesting here. Yeah, that's one thing, uh, you know, for those watching as well, when you're doing samplings or you're doing tastings like this, a lot of times when you're going from one, one whiskey to the next, the first sip is an indicative of that dram. You've got is that the second, because that first sip is going to get in there. You still got some of the other whiskeys on your palate let that first sip of the next whiskey kind of really get in there, saturate everything, take it over. And then your second sip is where you should start to get more of that dram. Yeah. More of the sweetness is shining through. Uh, As you're saying, that grain character is definitely shining through now. How about like a, just a brain buster. Do you get any vanillas? Definitely not in the nose right now. Let me throw it. Let me throw another sip here. I mean, I can definitely see a little. I don't know that I would have picked it out had you not asked, but I can definitely maybe mid palate as the smoke kind of rounds out a little bit and the sweetness starts to pick up. I definitely feel like, yeah, there's maybe a little vanilla in there to go along with the malty character. It's funny. I'm like smelling my own breath and it's just super smoky. (laughs) (laughs) And I want you all to know this is an experience. I'm drinking my first peated whiskey in front of everybody. I hope you're all enjoying my misery. No, it's actually, I'm very excited because I have a few peated whiskeys in the vault um, that we're going to, are going to come up for review at some point. I was worried about it because I didn't know if I was going to hate them. Um, Well, I don't feel like I'm going to do a great job of reviewing them for you in terms of giving you all the flavor notes that are there. Um, I am glad that it tastes good. And I actually kind of enjoy the smokiness to it. Although I'm, my palate's going to be wrecked after this for sure. Like there's just, I don't, how long does it take to get this smoke out of your mouth? (laughs) I I feel like, you know, it's like after you smoke a cigar and you're tasting smoke and when you wake up the next morning, doesn't matter how many times you use mouthwash and brush your teeth. I don't know what you have for review that's coming up, but. I, I probably tainted you with this one because this is a, a good one. It won a lot of uh, our, uh, the whiskey tubers reviews kind of, it was in a lot of our whiskeys of the year for last year. It's one of the better ones. Um, but I, I mean, I don't on, know the, gonna... on the Pete scale, where does this fall? I know that you guys do, you guys, you scotch people. I know you scotch people do, uh, <laughs> do there's the, what are there? There's a, a, uh, P- well, PPM, part, uh, peated, of the part, peated parts per million. So you look at Ardbeg and Lafroig, people view them as heavy hitters. They're coming in, you know, around 50, 55 parts per million of peat. I don't know on this one. This one, I would guess, is probably about 40 to 45. I think it's a little lower. It's still pretty well peated. Um, I mean, there's lighter ones and there's heavier ones for sure. So anyway, I want, uh, I'll just show you. So the brand on this one. Lagavulin. I so this, do have a Lagavulin 16 back okay. here. in the. Uh, so Lagavulin 16 converts a lot of people to scotch and to peated scotch. Lagavulin 16 is a, has a sherry cask influence to it. It spends most of its life in a bourbon cask and then some of it in a sherry cask. 
Interesting. Um, and as we're sitting here talking, I haven't taken a sip in a while. I'm definitely, and it's been a couple minutes since I've had any of the whiskey, and I'm definitely getting other characters. Like this thing is definitely changing as we just sit here and talk. And I definitely get some vanilla kind of towards the back of my palate now. It's pretty prominent. Now the reason is this isn't the Log of Ulan sixteen. This is the uh, the twelve year, uh, which is cask strength, and it's last year's twenty seventeen edition. Oh, okay. So, there are some slight variances in year to year. A lot of people felt last year's the 2017 was outstanding and it was, it was above uh, what the other, some of the other 12 years had done. Now the also with this one, so this one is just ex bourbon cask. There's no sherry cask influence on this one. So this one is allowing you to see really the characteristics of the Lagavulin distillery. They've taken that. And when you do your 16, you'll probably find there's a little bit darker, uh, sweeter stuff, it, sweetness in there. Those are the vanilla characteristics that you're picking up with this one, which to me is really prominent along with the peat is because it's just been in that ex bourbon cask. Yeah. And, and it's um, 58, 56.5% ABV. Yeah. I mean the definitely, you can tell the proof's high. I don't know that I would have picked it at that high. I mean, I was feeling maybe like closer to a hundred, but um very interesting. How do you perceive age when it comes to these peated whiskeys? Because I feel like, I mean, for me, I don't know if it's just because I'm not used to this, but I can't really feel, there's no, I can't find the characters that would kind of give me a hint as to what the age was. It, it, it's hard to tell. Now, generally, peat diminishes as the whiskey gets older. So a younger peat, you know, an eight-year-old, there's a Lagavulin eight-year um, this is just ex bourbon cask, and that would actually be pretty neat to see next to this one to see how they compare the eight year to the 12 year. Um, you get up into the 16, there's a Lafroig 18 year where the peat is. I mean, it's just to me, I love the Lafroig 18. It's really the peat has, has subsided a little bit, it's really smoothed out. Usually, the younger peat's going to be a little harsher, a little bit more in your face, you know, up front. And look at, you know, there's what's the most popular ones, Lafroig 10 and Ardbeg 10, you know, two of your most favorite peated whiskey. They're 10 years old. Uh, Lagavulin 8 is outstanding at eight years old. So. Hmm. Very interesting, man. I'm, yeah. I'm very curious to try more peated whiskey. Like I said, I just need more experience with it. I mean, it's such a different world than what I've been used to tasting, but I'm, I'm curious about it and I don't hate it. Like a lot of people, I know they talk about like, oh, peated whiskey is disgusting. It tastes like you're eating charcoal. And <laughs> I don't, I don't definitely don't get that from it. I mean, you can see there's flavor back there. I'm just not, my palate's just not ready to find all of it yet. But right. But like this one might taint you a little bit because it really is one of the better done. Uh, you get into some of the younger ones and you might not get as much of that sweetness. You might not get as much of that vanilla along with the peat. So the Lagavulin 16 that you picked out, like I say, it, it converts a lot of people to scotch. It converts a lot of people to peated scotch. You know, it's it's very, re for a 16-year-old whiskey, I think in around here, most of the time it's like 80, maybe 90 bucks. And it's been on sale, I've seen, you know, for 70 bucks. Yeah. Which is outstanding. I, I, I picked up a few of these when I could find them for relatively inexpensive prices. Like I, the Lagavulin 16 was at Costco for like, 55 bucks so i grabbed that um i think i got an ardbeg 10 when that was uh, relatively inexpensive i got a little Freug. i think it was a 10 year i can't remember the other ones i might have picked up but uh, those are the ones the names i always hear when it comes to pd whiskey so i kind of seek you know, was, was waiting to find those ones at a good price and when i did yeah. i picked them up uh now bit mr bill is asking um if we know how long bourbon barrels held juice before the scotch hit them i think it just depends when you look at, you know, 80 or 90% of the uh, bourbon barrels, bourbon can only be held in a barrel one, whiskey can only be held in a, in a barrel one time to be called bourbon. Then they can't use that barrel again. So a lot of your bourbon distilleries, they sell their used casks to Scotland for people to age their whiskeys in. So when you look at probably the, the majority of those 80, 90% are probably you know, your Jim Beam barrels, um, Elijah Craig, Maker's Mark, uh, Jack Daniels, maybe some of those. So majority of your barrels are probably younger bourbons. 
So I would imagine those that have held bourbon longer are more sourced, more sought after, maybe for different character for uh, different distilleries. They probably, I would imagine, even garner a higher dollar, you know, for the bourbon distilleries. You take a, you, a, a barrel that held Van Winkle for 23 years in it. I'm sure a Scotch, you know, distillery is going to pay top dollar for it. Oh, yeah. I'm sure I'm sure there's got to be I, I'm, I would be curious to find out more about the barrel trade. You know, how does that whole scenario go down between these guys? I mean, <clears throat> that, that'd be a kind of an interesting thing to explore that you don't hear much about. Right. OK, I'm seeing a couple of people chatting in here that we're I'm at four hundred and ninety nine subscribers. I can't look right now, but <laughs> we need, I need one more. <laughs> I'm going to pour me just a little shot of the Lagavulin to share with you here. Yeah, definitely. I get my, walk, my glass cleaned out. I would love to hear your flavor notes on it and see if I can kind of find what you're what you're picking up mm -hmm. in it. But now hopefully it didn't um, taint you too much with uh, this is this is one of the better well known peated limited release editions anyway. Yeah, I want to say I saw that one at the store. I think I might still be able to pick that one up. I think I saw it not too long ago. Now, if if it is, look, the, like I say, the year tells you 2017 was really regarded as one of the better releases they've had for a while. Um, usually around $110, $120 a bottle. So, And I've, yeah. got, I've got a spare. I picked up another one after this one. So yeah, Bart, I, I think Bart has three. <laughs> I recall that it was significantly more expensive than the other log of ones it was sitting next to. So it might be that around that might be the one that was there. Yeah. The peat just jumps out at you though. That's what gets you right from the start. Peanuts. How about, how about a salted roasted peanut? I definitely, I'm not getting any kind of nutty character from it. How about just on the nose? Hmm. The salt, the salt, uh, Isla is surrounded by ocean and, and being aged there. A lot of times your Isla peats get a saltiness to them as well. That ocean. I definitely get the saltiness. saltiness. I pick that up kind of towards the, the back end on the nose when I'm smelling it. Once you get past the smoke, there definitely kind of turns into that little bit of savory smokiness. I don't think I'm finding a nutty character though. Just a little bit, almost like you're uh, even sitting on the beach, smelling the uh, ocean as a, as the wind breeze blows over you. Hmm. Oh my, yeah. Woo. Got a lot of ABV on that. Good. That was my first sip, but. Peat, the um, now sometimes you get um, Ardbeg to me will give off a very heavy, sometimes like a cigarette ashtray. To me, this is more campfire, like you're sitting by the campfire, there's wood logs that you're throwing on it by the ocean, and that barbecue, like a smoked ham. Hmm. I feel like that smoked ham I definitely can find in there. Like the uh, that meaty barbecue kind of flavor, I definitely can kind of put my nose, my uh, my finger that on that one in there. All now, those and the vanillas. Now, having not drank any other smoked type whiskeys, I mean, do you find there's a, a big difference in what you would call it, like a, a whiskey that's smoked with peat as opposed to smoked with something else? Um, I'm trying to think. There is most. I've seen like whiskey, smoked whiskeys and things like that out there, and I'm curious how the, the, the can you tell a difference in the smoke character based on what it was smoked with? I think if you had, I think you would be able to tell. And I'm trying to right off the top of my head, I'm thinking that Woodford Reserve Cherry Wood smoked, which to me was not good. That was not a good combination. Um, 
most are using. I'm trying to think what else what else uses something besides peat. Even a lot of your American distilleries are are using peat. Um Balcones brimstone used there well no are there some mesquite smoked whiskeys? I've seen I've definitely seen mesquite smoked. Like off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you who's doing it, but I've definitely seen those out there. Not a lot of them, maybe a couple. Excuse me, you get a little water there. <laughs> to me, a nice uh, this with all those smoke, the smoked meats, the smoke, the campfire. You got the vanilla. You get like a powdered sugar sweetness with the vanilla. And to me, that's I mean, that's wrapping it up. That's about it. Yeah. All right. Well, let me do one. We'll get out of here in just a couple minutes. I set something up here that I thought would be fun to do that I did on my last live stream. Let me see if I can get it to work. We'll go here. Share. All right. Can you? Well, that's not going to do it. You're sharing the screen. Yeah. You're seeing like a bunch of my screens, though, huh? Let yeah. Just all you got to do, that's because it's getting Google Hangouts. Just minimize, do that, but then minimize Google Hangouts. And it'll show your desktop screen. Let me try that. Let me try if I can do the application window. And I'll do this. All right. How about that? Can you see that? Yep. There you go. All right. Try this. So I went on your Instagram and I thought we'd have a little fun going over a couple of the posts you've made in there over the years. You bet. Uh, you. We, already kind of, we already kind of talked about this one. <laughs> this is your new, uh, your new uh, <clears throat> whiskey set up behind you there. So we've kind of that gone one, over that a little bit. That picture's got more likes than any other picture we've posted. <laughs> well, I can say that I've posted because Bart doesn't post. So, so this was a post from today. I don't know if this will work. Let's this see this bad boy. Let's, can we get any audio on this? I don't know how that works. Oh, we don't have audio. We have nothing. All right. So Scott was in here rocking out with his with his son and Michael Jackson, and maybe you can get a dri dri He was he was getting into it, and you can kind of see <laughs> that he was getting down with his bad self. So. <laughs> that was a fun post. Um, we get in the car to go to the grocery store. My 16 year old, he's messing with his phone. He's got it plugged in. He's trying to uh, to play music. And I'm like, we're just going to the grocery store. Let's go. And he's <laughs> like, I got to get my beats on. So he starts up and it's um, Michael Jackson, Billy Jean. And I'm like, really? You're listening to Michael Jackson, Billy Jean? <laughs> I mean, I remember when that song came out. So this one, I, you posted not too, too long ago. I think this is what, maybe last month? Mm hmm And you guys were rocking the kilts? Mm hmm those what, were How kilts. did they get you guys into kilts? How did that go down? Those are sport kilts, so those are basically a kind of a cheap version of an actual kilt. Uh, Simon Brooking on the far left-hand side is a ambassador. He works for Beam Suntory, but he represents Lefroy, uh, Bomore, and Auchentoshan. And basically going around the states, um, selling their, pro I mean, selling those whiskeys. So he had invited us up to Kansas City for a uh, a tasting in the afternoon. We met with him, just me and Bart and him. Sat down. He had, I think, ten different whiskeys or so, you know, for us. And uh, I kind of thought, well, maybe he's just setting thirty minutes or an hour aside for us. No, he. He, he sat down with us for the whole afternoon and talked that led up to this kilt walk that happened that night, which was kind of a pub crawl type deal. So this was the last bar that we went to in Kansas city. And they had this, this picture. You can't even really tell how big it is. This thing was probably five foot by five foot or six foot by six foot painting of Bill Murray there. That was just <laughs> awesome. It looks like something straight off the chive. And I can't remember. It was for sale for, I want to say, $7,000 or something. Oh, like I yeah. Need start, I need to start painting pictures of Bill Murray. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this was your very, very first post that you guys did back about two, just almost exactly two years ago. Halloween yeah. two years ago. McAllen Edition 2 with, an old, with your Glen Karen glass there. 
we had um okay so we were on we got we started youtube we were on youtube for a while and you know there's all this other social media platform i don't understand what it is or why we need it why do we need it we're on youtube we decided we needed twitter so we got onto twitter we're on youtube we're on twitter bart tried to do stuff at first and then he gave up then he wanted to, so then he started the Facebook page, but then he gave up on that too. <laughs> we had a lot of people or several people say, you got to get on Instagram. I'm like, we're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. I don't know. Do we need to be on Instagram? And finally, Scotch Trooper convinced me, okay, get on Instagram. Honestly, yeah, yeah. In Instagram is probably the, for whiskey folk anyway, Instagram is, is a, awesome platform there's we've had more interaction and more stuff thrown at us through instagram than anywhere else so yeah this was and i went through it first and i just had some old pictures and some different th photos that i'd taken you know of whiskeys and stuff that i posted so and probably addition two was probably fairly new at that time two years ago yeah i mean it had to have been right about then yeah that's awesome. Yeah, I use Instagram a ton. It's probably where I interact with people the most is on Instagram. I post all kinds of stuff on there in terms of like what I'm finding for whiskey. I think, yeah, I think it's the most bang for the buck. All right. So this one was just an interesting picture. It's obviously a thumbnail from one of your videos. You giving <laughs> Bart a, a nice, juicy kiss on the cheek. He didn't know that was coming either. I don't know if you can tell by his expression. You can see the look of fear on his face. <laughs> he was, he started like two drops of pee came out. He didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was an intriguing picture. It was a good thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> what, what inspired that uh, show of affection? Well, <clears throat> what it should be. So, in 2017 july the first weekend first saturday of july 2017 we did our first 12 hours of boom in episode one we did a sample of balvany ton 1509 batch three that was sent to us by sam spears it was so good i vowed to go get my own bottle even knowing it was a 300 dollars plus bottle right I knew there was one place in town I had seen it. That was Saturday. Monday morning, uh, Bart and I run around. I'm like, I want to run out there to uh, Groves and see if they still have that Balvany out there. So we go out there, and it was actually $399. But the manager in there knew us, Scotch Test Dummies, and uh, we got, I think I got it for three and a quarter a little bit of a discount on it, which I thought was a deal. We go to a couple of other places and we're shopping around, pick up some other bottles. I pick up that Gordon McPhail Linkwood 15 year. We went back to bars. We were filming some episodes and I had to run home for something. So I'm getting out of my Tahoe in the driveway and whatever bottle is in my left hand hits the door as I'm getting out and I feel it get knocked out of my hand oh. in a free fall towards the driveway. No. And I immediately thought, please let that be the Gordon and, and McPhail Linkwood. It hit the ground and I heard it and it shattered in the tube. And I looked down and it's the Balvany ton 1509 batch three. <laughs> no. Yeah. I'm just like, oh my God, $340 plus with tax. I don't know. Gone. Blink of an eye. All right. So we go on, we shoot the reviews. Well, Bart, well, we ended up, we did what we did, what we did that day. We didn't do the Gordon McPhail till later. Bart, unbeknownst to me, felt so bad for me. He actually had to source, but he found me another bottle of Balvany Ton 1509 Batch 3. So we, uh, when we shot him, we ended up doing, we reviewed the Balvany Ton 1509 Batch 3 and the Gordon McPhail Linkwood back to back. 
Well, I think I'm giving him the kiss because we were talking about those two bottles and how I thought I had dropped the Gordon McPhail. I didn't. I dropped the Balvenie, but he gave he gifts me as a friend the Balvenie in return. So I have it. And we reviewed the Gordon and Link Gordon McPhail Linkwood 15, and I give him the kiss. <laughs> well, that's a good story. <laughs> And actually, I still had what happened. Okay, so the Balvenie Ton 1509. So here's the bottle that Bart bought me. And when I get out of the truck, I've got it in my hand. It hits it. It falls to the ground and lands like this first. So there was a good dent in the tank in the tin can or in the tin lid right here. And it's like when it comes down like this and it hits the ground on this end it blows the bottom end of the barrel out and just sent whiskey everywhere. Ugh. So I had the whole bottle with, it had a dent in the lid or in the cork up here in the topper. And then the bottom was broke, was just shattered out of it, but the bottle was intact. We end up, we auctioned that bottle and the tin um, during our uh, drams for fams last uh march or so and i think it went for like 80 bucks i want to say somebody bought my broken bottle <laughs> bought a broken bottle of balvenie ton 1509 uh which the 80 bucks went towards the drams for fans hey at least you got something out of it somebody <laughs> did anyways all right guys we've been going long enough tonight i don't want to take up any more any more of your time i thank everybody for joining us tonight i'm sorry to say we did not hit the 500 subscribers i just checked mm. right before. we hit 499 we didn't get to the 500 so I, I should have been smart and asked scott to come on his channel instead of him coming on mine that would have probably done it but we could yeah yeah, yeah that would do it <laughs> maybe you get to be like 501 you get like two two subscribers <laughs> But hey, it's all good. Subscribers aren't everything. I'm glad that you guys could all come join us tonight. And thank, big thanks to Scott for coming on. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate all your help over the last several months with everything I've been doing. And you've always been super supportive. So thank you so much for that. Um, follow Scott and them on the Real Scotch Test at Real Scotch Test Dummies on Instagram. They have a bunch of cool pictures they post and stuff like that. And you can find fun little videos of Scott dancing with his son in the car. So go ahead and check <laughs> them out there. Um, I post a bunch of stuff on Instagram too. I'm at blind underscore reviews if you're not already following me. So Thanks again for everybody joining us tonight. Scott, you have anything you want to say before we wrap up? Hey, thanks to everybody for tuning in. And thank you, John, for having me on. That was a blast. I love doing it, uh, especially if I've got the time. I try to make it. And uh, blind tasting whiskey, you just you learn so much from it. Uh, you, uh, you, you learn things and you get things you don't expect. And it, it's a good way to uh, – it's what your channel's based on is blind reviews. So – absolutely man well hey, everybody everybody have a great night have a great safe weekend hopefully we'll be back doing a live stream in the near future here good night night everybody slaunch it dummies <laughs>